Welcome everybody to another episode of our Essentials video series. Uh, I'm here today with Mr. Dirk Tolson. Dirk, please say hello to everybody. Hello everyone. And uh, yeah. um, okay. <laughs> Dirk has been a friend for um, a long time. I guess it's been about a decade. Mm -hmm. And um, Dirk's uh, just a wonderful man, him and Melanie and their daughter Zoe, who you know is uh, a staff member at our church. And uh, our topic today is, um, is quiet times, how to have a quiet time. This is something we thought would be very, very helpful. And Dirk is somebody who is a man of prayer. Uh, we have breakfast monthly and um, just always are talking about what we're reading in the Bible, what we're praying for, how we can pray for each other. So I thought he would have a lot of uh, wisdom and authority to speak to this um, topic. So Dirk, thanks for being with us. No problem. Um, we'll just start. And um, I want to first just talk about what is a quiet time. So in a quiet time, there are a variety of things a person could have um, happen in that time. Would you describe to us just what some of the elements of what you think would make up a productive quiet time? Okay. Well, I think the basics are the Bible and prayer those are the things that to me are you're going to you it's because to me a uh, a quiet time is building your relationship with god and so that is conversing relating to god the way main way that god has 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 revealed himself to us is in scripture and so reading the word but prayer is the way we listen and bring ourselves to god um, and the things that are on our heart and, and that. So those, you know, I do some other things in mine or what I think of as my quiet time, but those are just things that have developed over the years. I do scripture memory and some other things. Um, meditation, which is just a, another way of looking at the word, is also a part of a quiet time, I think. Awesome. And just like the idea of a quiet time, what we're talking about, following models of people in the Bible that it, it very specifically says they got a way to pray. I'm thinking of David, I'm thinking of Daniel, I'm thinking of Jesus. Would you speak more to the scriptural precedent of the idea of each day and sometimes multiple times a day? I think it says David three times a day and Daniel seven times a day would get away and pray and worship. Mm -hmm. Speak more to that scriptural precedent of a disciple of, of Jesus, a, a lover of God, making a daily time to go and seek God alone. Well, it's, it's funny because there, in Scripture, there is no have a quiet time, and this is right. what one is. There's nothing quite like that, but we do have um, just the history, looking at the, the, um, the founders of our faith, looking at Jesus himself, mm -hmm. um, people spending time, taking time to, to be with God. Um, um, one of my favorite images is in the Bible is Rebecca coming back to see Isaac and um, and Isaac is walking, meditating. And um, just that picture of him out being with God, that's how I met what I imagine he's doing. And that's how Rebecca first sees him. Um, so, but Jesus, as you said, David, um, I think it's who you want to be with. It's who you want to to change your life. It's who you want to. Um, who is that most important person in your life? And it may you may think immediately of your spouse. You may think of um, immediately of of certain friends who just resonate with you. Well, God is to me that ultimate friend. He has called us. In fact, in John fifteen, He calls us friends. He says, "No longer do I call you slaves. You know, I call you friends." Yeah. And um, in that picture, a friend of God, I get to spend time with God. And so um, that's, to me, the, what's driving this. It's what drove these men to be with God. 
That is that is beautiful. I want to read a quote that um, this just fits into exactly what you said. Leonard Ravenhill, who's a preacher mm -hmm. and some say a revivalist and a man of prayer. I wrote this in my Bible years and years ago, and I, I read it often because it, it drives me in, in quiet, my quiet times and motivates me and inspires me. He says, the aspirant for spiritual wealth and for the ear of God will know much loneliness and will eat much of the bread of affliction. He may not know too much about family or social opposition. On the other hand, he may. But this is sure, he will know much of soul conflict and of silences which may create misunderstandings and of withdrawal from even the best of company. For lovers love to be alone and the high peaks of the soul are reached in solitude. So yeah. that's what we're talking about. We're talking about getting alone, um, no TV, no internet, unless you're using that to read the Bible. Um, and you talked about, I, I think you hit on the two, two big things, uh, the components, prayer, scripture reading, uh, meditation. I want to throw a few more out. And then if you have a few more ideas, Dirk, I'd love to hear them. Because for me, the quiet time, part of the joy of it is it's almost like you're building your, I call it a personal liturgy. It's like you're building your own church service. It's just you and Jesus. So for me, it, it, there's meditation, there's journaling, which I would consider meditation through paper. Mm -hmm. There's obviously scripture reading, memorization, prayer, uh, worship, singing, or just reciting a psalm is actually at wonderful. Fasting being part of that, just sometimes just sitting in still. Um, any other just ideas um, as, as we talk about just components of this, this 20, 30 minutes, an hour that we spend with the Lord that would just kind of be part of that liturgy that come to mind? Nothing, um, nothing outside the things you've mentioned. All those things are aspect of it and fit into it at different periods of time. Um, perhaps one of the, a very important one for me is meditation, and part of that is scripture memory. So that's part of the, what I do in the mornings is I review my the scripture that I've memorized, and so I can take that with me through the rest of the day. Um, um, so I'm I'm not tied to a Bible, or whatever I can. I mean, driving and, and thinking about the scriptures because I've got it in my head. So that's a very important part of it. But all those things you said, sometimes fasting, you know, when we are fasting, it becomes part of um, that devotional time, that spending time with God. It's, it's an aspect of it and colors that and changes it. I'm not a singer, so I don't, I have a hymnal right here next to me, but I, I can't read music. And, and I have to occasionally go to Mel and go, what's the melody here? And because um, she can. And she goes, oh, that's no, 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 no. And, um, and so I'm not a great singer, but I do read the Psalms a lot. And I do turn to hymns. I love that. I have an old Methodist hymnal that I found in an abandoned church once in uh, North Carolina. And I just love it. It's a wonderful way to just, if it's quiet, and maybe you can't sing because people are around. Um, but, but just to read an old hymn has been so life-giving to me, to listen to music um reading the psalms yeah um so you talked about prayer that's a big thing how do you know what to pray like let's say you say i'm going to pray for five minutes or ten minutes how does especially who's new at this how do they know even what what do i pray about do i tell god i love him do i pray for other people do i pray for things i want to happen in my life like what's a good way to just kind of as an introduction of knowing what to pray every day for me, and what I tell people again and again, is to pray your heart. And oftentimes that is, sometimes it's I'm, I'm, I'm on fire, I'm excited, um, and pray that and tell God that and, and bless him and thank him for those things. Um, sometimes it's, Lord, life sucks right now. I just, I can't, I, and you go to him and you tell him that and you go those things. Another thing that I use when I can't, I sometimes I'll use the Lord's Prayer when I can't think of anything else. But another one is the acronym ACTS, which mm -hmm. you've heard, probably heard of, which stands for Adoration, Confession, Thanksgiving, and Supplication. Um, and so that just gives you some, the Psalms are a great place to find um, adoration text of adoration to read about God and to challenge your own heart and um, uh, confession is just that coming before the Lord and going search me know me you know um, let me let me know what things are getting in the way of my life with God uh, so 
Thanksgiving supplication, I actually use an app for my prayers because it's on my phone and I'm talking with you and you say something, I write it down in my app yeah. and uh, I come back to it when I come go to pray and it says, pray for Jeff. Oh, this is that thing I wrote down and I can do that. Um, so I, I'm a software developer. So I use lots of little apps that help me. You know, I use one for which scripture am I reading and what am I memorizing? And so I use lots of little apps, but I use one for prayer. Yeah, that's, that's great. I love the acts. I was hoping you'd mention that in ACTS. There's lots of, uh, again, the idea of a liturgy. And I think it's really important. Like if I'm going to get in the word before I get maybe in the word, it's, it's just, this seems silly, but it's like, it's, I've got to deal with God. Like I usually need at least five or 10 minutes to just sit like, Hey Lord, good morning. Like I, I'm here. You're here. I'm, I'm thinking of the things in my life and just sort of a, you know, it's sort of like before we get into it, you know, the word, I just need to sort of that be in the presence, behold the Lord, it's, you know? And um, so that idea of just starting with adoration and then confession um, you know, before I pray for other people, supplication, right. I probably want to deal with what's happening in me first. And that way it doesn't become rote and it changes sometimes. Like you may start out thinking you're going to do this, but by the end of your meeting with God, things have like, he's brought other things up that happens to me frequently. And so it's a, it's an organic thing, isn't it? It's not just a routine. It, it really does become organic. Um, right. Um, yeah. So uh, that, those are great models. Um, I wanted to mention this too. Dirk uh, just ex ex talked about an app. You can do notes on your phone. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, you know, something I've, I've kind of figured out about 10 or 15 years ago, and it helped me just go from random praying this or that to feeling like I was actually praying things that had power and had purpose to them is what I began doing. And similar to it sounds like what you do is when, when I felt something highlighted, like a friend needed prayer, or I just became convicted of sin in my life. It's almost like there, there became this glow about that prayer. And this is really something I need to pray for and pray about. So what I began doing, and I've talked about this before is I just began um, making mm -hmm. lists and an app is fine. I'm, I'm just a dinosaur. So I still like to write things down. But I have a revolving list that changes every three, six months of things that I specifically feel the Lord telling me to pray for, whether it's myself or others. And I would just encourage folks listening. That's a way, like, if there's just something that keeps coming up, then start your list. Start your, you know, talk to Dirk Hilton. What is the name of that app, by the way? It is, I have no idea. It is Prayer Mate prayer mate so a guy in england who just wants people to pray more awesome and there's probably a thousand apps just like that there's the ignatius examine app there's uh you can do the dinosaur method but i think the idea is just having some material and for me it's very rich if i know i need to pray for the church or i want to pray for dirk or my wife or my son or if god highlights a verse for me um, yesterday, a verse in Genesis was really highlighted as I was praying, and it just became something that I felt like I want to pray that verse for my life for weeks. So it's mm -hmm. sort of like it gives you material, and I, there's nothing wrong with a routine or lists in prayer, I think. I think it's a very powerful yeah. thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I pray for, for people, and in the past, I've had cards, um, you know, a card for Zoe. And there were a list of things on there that I would pray. And I might not pray everything on that list every day, but I would pray one or two things on that list that were that she had either said, I need prayer here, or were on my heart for her. Uh, so that kind of thing, you know. So you're there because there are people you're always going to be praying for um, whenever you pray. Yeah, that's good. Um, let's talk about the Bible. Um, writing the word on our heart. Um, Tell us, for someone who has never read the Bible consistently and wants to get into some sort of daily uh, immersion in the Bible, what, what would be some good recommendations of just how do you figure out? Because, you know, doing this, well, today I'll do this, and tomorrow I'll do this, and maybe today, that, I don't think that's a good plan long term. Give us some ideas of developing like a structure and a schedule to read the Bible. I think there's just a uh... Um, a multitude of reading plans out there. You don't have to go and create one 
unless you want, you know, unless you have some desire to. I think that structure, like you just said, is very important. I'm part of the VCC's reading group. So, you know, there's a group of people that, you know, right now we're in Genesis and um, that are always reading things. I can interact with them. But so that's one way to do it. Uh, who is it? Uh, I can't remember the name of the group now. The name, oh, Discipleship Magazine, you know, has one that you read through. It reads you through the whole Bible in a year. But. Um, so some of the Old Testament, some of the New Testament has a couple days at the end of the month so you can catch up. There are a lot of plans out there, whether mm -hmm. and, you know, and perhaps it's you don't need a plan that's going to take you to the Bible. Maybe I'm going to start. If I'm starting, start with the gospel. Start yeah. with John or yeah. Luke and just um, read a chapter a day. You can read the paragraph that's in your Bible might be a nice breakdown. Uh, um, and there are lots of plans you can find something chuck cochran i know just recently read through the bible chronologically mm -hmm. you know and and so um reading through acts and then the different epistles at the same time and so there are different ways you can do it and they're all good the thing is just is to be doing it um to pick something and i would say the Psalms and the Proverbs are also, I know people that used to use, they read a Psalm every day and they read a Proverb every day. And um, God, that's an incredibly rich um, a bunch of stuff there. I think it's, I think we need to get out of just doing that. But if you're just starting, there's a wonderful place to start. Yeah, that's so good. Those are the places I remember starting. And, um, you know, it's, uh, you know, Dirk, I, I'm sure you remember like the first time you read the whole Bible. It's sort of a, it's a real achievement. I was just talking to some, a young lady in our church who just read the whole Bible. I challenged her. I don't know. It was like eight months ago. I said, you need to re read the whole Bible. That's the first thing if you've never done that. And so she did, she did it in like under a year. And she told me like, I, wow, I did it. And I was shocked, but there's, you know, if, if, if you've never done that, I would say that, um, you know, read the new Testament and then Testament. And there's just something really, really wonderful about that. Dirk, talk to us about, um, David says, I think it's in Psalm 119, um, and I think it's David, um, it's early, so my brain's not all here yet, but um, I've written your word in my heart, so I might not sin against you. Um, mm -hmm. There's something about this idea of just exposing ourselves over and over and over to the word of God as the days and the weeks and the years pile on in the decades that does something really wonderful and protects us. Would you talk about just that idea of, of long-term writing the word on your heart and how it builds our, our walk with God? Again, I think that's the main way that God has revealed himself to us. That's the way he speaks to us. That's the way he gives us guidance. That's the way he comforts us. Um, and so to be doing that each day is to, um, it's kind of to drag us out of all the stuff that's going on around us, the yeah. virus, the things at work, the family, all those things. And in this special quiet time, this special alone time to get recentered, to get refocused and doing the Bible that way and, and doing it, like you said, reading all of it and it builds on itself and it's incredibly complex but it's very simple in some ways as well. The way it feeds us and gives us, um, sometimes God will give us a verse that will hang around for us for a day or two, or like you said, you know, something that's on your heart. I'm going to pray this for a week. Mm -hmm. um, the word changes our life. Yeah. And the, um, yeah, it changes our life. So to be in it every day is to be willing to change your life. It can be, an uncomfortable place to be. I find God putting his finger on certain things in my life right now and going, well, what about this? What about that? Yeah, that's great. Um, as we, as we wrap up um, practical things, I wanted to uh, mention a few things and then hear, hear what you would add to it. I found um, trying if possible to do it first thing early is good because um and that doesn't work for everybody but having a quiet place having a 
you know, you're in your chair, I'm in my chair. For me, it helps to have a, a good cup of coffee. Um, sometimes I'll light a candle. Um, sometimes I'll go outside, but just making it, um, you know, a colorful, enjoyable experience. My, my pastor Thor used to say, um, you know, the way I heard him introduce this idea of quiet time, what's quiet time? And he'd say, well, you just have a cup of coffee with Jesus. And for some that might seem a little impersonal, but then I think, well, the disciples sat around and ate fish with him and talked, you know, so it, there's just something enjoyable about that relational side of it. It's not me just on my face all the time, you know, praying these things, but there's something really enjoyable. Um, so, so what other kinds of just practical ideas, Dirk, would you give us um, in terms of, of things that can make this an enjoyable and meaningful experience? I think, let me just reinforce what you said. I think having a schedule and having a place, mm -hmm. you have a schedule for your morning. I think morning, morning for me is the best time as well. Some people just are not morning people and they do it at night, but most people do it in the morning. And I think having a schedule, you do have a morning schedule. You know, you get up, you breakfast, you go to work, and you have enough time in there that you put in to do the things you need to do right. for the day you have in front of you. And adding a quiet time is to adjust that schedule. And um, I think so having the first thing when I get up, you know, that's, um, I'll take a shower, and then I sit down with my glass of orange juice and my Bible, you know, and and I don't, I try not to look at my phone. I try not to look at the computer. I try not to look at the day's news or what email I got or did I get texts or, you know, what's going on. But it's like, okay, I'm going to start with God. I'm going to start with Jesus. And 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 then my day will go from there. And I'll address those other things. Um, our lives tend to be very noisy. And technology is one of the things where that noise comes from. And I think you know, it's it because I use apps. I'm on my phone anyway, but you know, so it's it's easy to get distracted. But I try to not do those things until I've had that time. And so, having and having a place, I have a a place where I sit, and it, and this just happened to work out for me. It's been different places over the years, but I think having a habit, you know, and then sometimes you do. You go, I'm going to go sit down back porch today yeah. and you do that you do those different things but you have that place where you begin and I think that is so important and you know you've talked about um, how long it takes a quiet time doesn't have to take very long the navigators have their seven minute quiet time which is 30 seconds of preparation prayer four and a half minutes of reading the bible and then two and a half minutes of prayer after that Mm -hmm. And that's a really short time, and it's it's a tough to do it for just that long. But quiet time doesn't have to be this long, expanse of time. Yeah, it's it can good. be just that focus. Lord, here I am. Talk to me. Amen. Awesome stuff, Dirk. Um, do you have any final thoughts? Anything we didn't cover that's on your heart? Do you want to share with folks in the church as they as they pursue this? I guess the one thing is, it's like that that resonates with me is that who do you want to spend time with and certainly we we all have those people that we want to be with because they're fun they're they they listen to the music we listen to they like the books we read this, those kinds of things and to me god is the ultimate friend i am mm -hmm. i he sh should be he can be I'm working on that aspect of my life right now. It's one of the places where God has put his finger and said, you think of me as, as this benign old man kind of thing sometimes. And I'm missing the vitality and the interaction that's possible in that relationship. A quiet time is where those things can begin. As mm -hmm. you read the word, as you pray your heart, and that would be, you know, sure, you can have a list of things like that. But sometimes you'll never get to it because you're praying in your yeah. heart. One of yeah. your, it's, it's what God, it's what happened that last night or yesterday or just what's going to happen that day. Pray your heart and, mm -hmm. and read, you know, with your heart. One of the things, when you read and you, then you go ask the questions, why 
when, where, what, how. Get into it. Get into it. Don't just read it. Think about it. Yeah. And that's where your meditation comes. And, yeah. And um, don't be scared of the word of God. Ask questions of it. And because you could, if you can't figure it out, mm -hmm. there's commentaries, go to Jeff, you know, go to me, whoever, go to someone and ask. Um, don't be scared of the word of God. Mm, that's good stuff. Awesome. Well, uh, Dirk is available. I'm available. We have seminary trained people such as Vanessa Vinoy. I would throw her out too that can help with questions. If you're trying to figure out what translation to get just any of those questions, we're all here and there's many others in the church who can help you. Um, so please, those who are watching, if you, if you have further questions and, and uh, Dirk, thank you so much. This has been really encouraging and you are a, um, you are an example of, of uh, someone I look up to who's, who's done this and who's a man of prayer in the word and it's obvious in your life. So you're an inspiration to us. And I hope that many are encouraged um, by watching this today to, to seek the Lord. He will be found. He is there waiting for us. As uh, A.W. Tozer says, um, God waits to be wanted. And I think that that's, a, that's an invitation to us to spend time with him. So thank you for your time. Thank you. And uh, everyone enjoy uh, this. I hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you in the next episode of Essentials. Bless you in the name of Jesus.